Hey, we're back. All right. So the adapter for my laptop obviously came, and uh, miracle of miracles, it actually works. So uh, back at it we go. So this is going to be an inside the stash video. Uh, we're going to catch you up on recent acquisitions. Uh, heck, we've had a shipment from uh, H.L. Jacob in, and some stuff I bought out of Bayi, some things I've grabbed locally uh, as well. And then uh, we'll get to uh, cooking up a regular stash report video to catch everybody up on the month. Again, there's been a lot going on. We have a couple of developments out of uh, you know the Ravel situation, but it really doesn't necessarily apply to anything new. It's just sort of the tattered dumpster fire remains of what is Hobbico at this point and some things that have happened there. But like I said, another video for another day. So uh, we're going to spin the camera around and uh, be right back. Uh, so I, I guess a, a very tiny minor update to bench goings on. This right here would be the uh, primer chassis to one of the uh, Toyota Corona uh, JTCC cars that BMAX done. Uh, it is, you know, white now when it was black. Always, always love it when you uh, cast a part in a color that it's not going to be. Um, this car... Um, you know, it's a unibody car, so it's, it's painted the same color as the car itself. Uh, pretty much all of the Corona, all of the, uh, these aren't Coronas, technically speaking, they're, no, they are Coronas, yeah. Corona Exiv would be the Tommy, I can't, that just popped in my mind, it made me think I was talking about the wrong thing, but yeah, these, these Coronas, for the most part, all of them were white, every single one of them that ran. This, uh, chassis that I'm prepping, and I literally have just primered it the other day. First time I've been back downstairs uh, to the bench in probably a month uh, is going to go to the uh, Duracell Gear Race and Macau car that we showed you in the last stash report we did. We talked about the decals that are coming out of SK, so we're prepping it for that. Now, you might be saying, well, why didn't you leave the chassis black? That car is black. I remember well enough that car is black. Well, that car, in fact, is a uh, JTCC car that was run uh, in that race. It was one of the uh, Tom's Toyota JTCC cars that was run. And when they got it to, uh, I don't know if it was just borrowed or legitimately sent to Macau. Because a lot of, if you start reading the history of a lot of Group A racing and touring car racing, a lot of the cars ran, like, Europe, and then they would run Japan, and then they would run, like, Australia, and then they would run Macau, and they'd sort of hand me down between the series uh, in the sense that the same race team would run the cars, but they would just be running them in different series. So, you know, certain series run at different times of the year. Obviously, uh, some of Australia can run at times opposite of a European series or an American series because, obviously, it's summer when it's winter and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so, yeah, there's... Uh, the beginnings of this. Obviously, the chassis itself will stay white. Obviously, we've got to detail out the engine and things like that. But So there's that. Uh, on the, the purchase frontier, uh, I had actually had the house to myself last weekend. Um, my family went on vacation. They planned the vacation prior to me uh, changing jobs. You guys may have noticed that I'm clean-shaven now. job that I'm in, in now requires me to be clean-shaven. Uh, so no more goatee for you guys, at least not for the foreseeable future. And uh, I, I bought a whole bunch of primer and masking tape and all sorts of things because I I was gonna get some stuff done, dang it! And I actually legitimately uh, came into my basement one time to mail a kit out to Colorado, and that was literally just coming down here, grabbing the kit, putting it in the box, packing it up, and then that was it. I couldn't use this computer that we run the the, the videos on, and I just. I got into a thing that I think a lot of people did who enjoy 24 hours racing. I got into chasing a live feed for the 24 hours of Le Mans around the internet. Uh, the uh, folks who run the 24 hours of Le Mans licensed that race to Motor Trend here in North America. So it was on Velocity, if you happen to get that channel, which I think is like 2,375 on the bottom of your cable box. Uh, or you can watch it on Motor Trend Online, but the Motor Trend Online was only doing in-car camera broadcast. It wasn't doing an actual feed of the race. So uh, various fine Europeans were risking their YouTube accounts, or probably creating fake ones so that nobody really cared, but creating, risking their YouTube accounts and Twitch accounts and 
uh, where else did I see it? Uh, Periscope to broadcast the race, or the Eurovision feed of the race, I guess I should say. Uh, you could get a YouTube broadcast of Radio Le Mans, their radio broadcast. Uh, it was a studio camera. So they were watching the same feed as the Eurovision feed, so if you could sync the times on the, on the two videos up, you could watch the race as it happened. But it seemed that about every 45 minutes to an hour, uh, you know, they would find the pirate feed and they would shut it down. And I understand that everybody has to make their own money, and I'm certainly, you know, at nearly 41 years old, not advocating piracy and stealing things. But at the same time, uh, it's a little lame that a major race like that is only on some, you know, fifth-tier cable channel and a effectively dysfunctional online uh, broadcasting service. Because YouTube, uh, not YouTube, but Motor Trend Online is awful. Uh, it's also the only way you can get like uh, the bank, the Blanc Pain Sprint series. Um, also, probably the Blanc Pain Endurance series at this point, because they would deal with uh, Blanc Pain to do those races. There was a point in time where you could watch Blanc Pain G uh, Asia GT on Nismo on YouTube, but I don't think you can do that anymore. Even the only thing Nismo can broadcast in the United States is uh, Super GT. Now you can't, I realize you're looking at a blank screen, I'm just blathering on, but this just came into my mind after I changed the camera angle, so bear with me. Uh, you know, you could, of course, you know, set up a VPN, spoof your computer into a different country and watch things that way, but it's just, it's, it's way more trouble than it's worth to watch something. I can understand Blumpain's uh, Sprint Series. It's three-hour races, it's all in Europe, uh, not an interest to uh, anyone, quote-unquote, in the United States. So why would you want to... Who cares if, the, if like, the 10 people in the United States can't see it? But things like the 24 Hours of Le Mans, I mean, you know, it's a, a, an iconic race. That should be something uh, that even if Fox or NBC or whoever doesn't want to put it on the air, should be easily and, f I would say, freely accessible online because uh, the, aver the good graces of the advertising that you could put on it uh, you know, just in the terms of of building a, a, a proper broadcast screen. You guys have seen me do a couple of U, uh, live videos where I can put picture in picture and, and, and graphics on the screen and things like that. Uh, you could do, any, if I could do it, certainly a professional broadcasting place could do it. So anyway, I guess that's, that's my soapbox on that. But be it as it may, uh, I was not, I, I chased channels around and then, by that time, it was like 8 or 9 o'clock at night, and I hadn't touched anything, so it was like, I'm not starting anything now. So <laughs> a few people on uh, a couple forums were doing 24-hour builds for Le Mans, obviously not a popular 24-hour build time, unlike the one that's done in January. Uh, but I was like, oh, I have nobody home, no, no, I'll host myself, I'll participate, and then I did nothing. So for those people... I promised that I would do something. I apologize. I did nothing, and that's the story. I'm sticking to it. Anyway, so most of you guys know if you live out here on the East Coast or somewhere in that vicinity, uh, Ollie's got another great big dump of model kits. Uh, a lot of it being uh, some just random dreck. Uh, you know, you're still seeing a bunch of the old Lindbergh stuff pop up. Uh, you know, it's it's sort of one of those things where you wonder if they haven't sold it now, why do they keep putting it out? I mean, I understand they bought it. Who are they going to sell it to? But seriously, at this point, uh, there was supposed to be a whole bunch of Ravel stuff and a whole bunch of Round 2 stuff. Uh, there was very little Round 2 stuff other than some of the more recent Lindbergh reissues of, like, the old uh, testers, uh, Boyd stuff, Boyd Cotting and stuff. There's been, you know, the 37 Ford van and the 37 uh, Ford Coupe, I think it is. Um, those kits were back, but they were there the last time. And the Ravel kits this time were the pre-painted uh, Corvette, the two two colors of the pre-painted uh, Challenger, two colors of the pre-painted Mustang, all the, like the 2013 uh, kits, and then uh, a, a whole bunch of these. The Danica Patrick uh, version of the Ford Fusion NASCAR kit. Now this is the full detail glue kit, you know, it's not the snap tight one. Uh, I really couldn't care one way or the other about Danica Patrick. I, she could fall off the face of the planet tomorrow, and it wouldn't bother me in the slightest. Not in the sense that, like, ha 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 ha, she's dead, but just in the fact that she is completely and totally irrelevant. 
Uh, I know a lot of people are like, uh, if you say anything about Dana Patrick, you're immediately a, uh, a girl hater and this, that, and the other thing. And the fact is, she just really stinks as a race car driver. She should have stayed in open wheel. She had, like, the one win, which was an accident because of fuel mileage, but she was competitive in the Indy 500 that one year. And I think she probably would have legitimately had a chance at some, at least... Uh, a modicum of success if she had just stayed in open wheel racing. She came to NASCAR and be if you want to blame the good old boys club and people were wrecking her, uh, that may have been true at first, but after a while you guys start taking responsibility for the fact that every single race you're in, uh, you're you know damaging equipment and everything else. Uh, clearly, she was whether anyone wants to admit it or not a marketing draw because oh my god there was a girl driver and she's in GoDaddy commercials and nearly no clothing and all that rest of that stuff. So again, no ill will to her personally. I just think she should have stayed where she was uh, if she would have had success. She came to NASCAR. It was a miserable failure, and uh, you know it just it ended up looking terrible for her. Uh, you know, her decisions sometimes are not the ones that you needed to make. And anyway, so this is not going to be uh, Danica Patrick's kit when it's all said and done with. Uh, I want to build the one car that uh, Ryan Blaney ran. In, uh, I don't know what race it was run at. I've only seen pictures of the car. And I know decals are done for it. And that is the car that he had done up for Virginia Tech. It's a maroon car with the Virginia Tech logos on it. Um, like I said, I know the Mike's decal sells the decals. I think they're power slides. Um, and so I'll get, I'll grab, eventually I'll grab those decals and I'll grab a set of the contingency stuff for the tire decals. Uh, no real particular rush to be digging into this. I hear it's a pretty good kit. Um, I gotta study a few videos on what the best way is to, uh, drop the kit because it's a little, um, you know, mountain, a little mountain 4x4 stance like every Revell kit is and this really does need to be lower. I could, I could probably argue with people a little bit on some of the stance of some Revell kits out of the box in the sense that I think a lot of us want cars to look lower than they really are, and, and, the, and they're not really that low in real life. I could find you lots of pictures of Camaros, for example, uh, that are the same height as the Revell 2010 Camaro SS kit is when you build it. Um, I think a lot of pictures you find of cars online are modified, especially when you start talking about Camaros and Mustangs and things like that. One of the first things you people do when they buy Camaros and Mustangs and things like that is lower them for better handling. But factory stock, they're not exactly the lowest cars in the world. They're not Revell's right height too high, but not as high as I think a lot of people make it out to be. Uh, people are just used to seeing models that are dropped. Everybody wants to lower their models, and I have no issue with people doing it. That's that's not the problem. But I think everybody doing that makes everybody immediately think that everything is too high. But this one I know does ride too high. And it was one of the situations where, like I said, I wanted to, buy, wanted to build a, a Blaney car. Uh, he is His dad is Dave Blaney, who ran, of course, in NASCAR before. Is friends of my family uh, from Northeast Ohio. And... Uh, Dave, of course, didn't really have any kind of real success in, in NASCAR either after a very, very successful sprint car career. Uh, but I wanted to build his kid's car because this kid actually, I think, has a chance of doing something uh, over terms of his career. And I just didn't want to pay, you know, $25 for a NASCAR kit that I was only going to build like one of, maybe. And so for 10 bucks, the old $9.99 always special, which was actually a dollar more than it used to be. It used to be $8.99. Uh, went ahead and grabbed that. Um, so I started looking around a little bit for some of the newer release Revell kits that I had wanted. I had not purchased any of these kits because I think, like most of us, I figured that, uh, you know, they'd be around. And, uh, the one thing that has come to fruition from the situation with Revell being purchased by Blitz is there, of course, there's no way to distribute the kits even if you could get them because there's no U.S. Uh, distribution at this point for anything owned by the Ravel in Germany. So, kits that have actually sort of gotten rare are the stuff that was released that was desirable right before the, the bankruptcy took hold. And that would be things like the Foos FD100 pickup truck, the uh, GMC Big Game Hunter, uh, pickup truck, the old High Roller GMC. A lot of people wanted that kit when it came back out. Uh, the Jeep Honcho reissue that has the snowmobile out of the Ice Patrol pickup. That was a very desirable kit that actually sold out uh, prior to the even filing for bankruptcy. 
And uh, also, of course, the 30, 29 and 34 continue to be an issue uh, because they were not available for months. Um, I'm trying to think, there's one other kit that I noticed that was out of stock in a few places. But, uh, you know, right now, Ravel kits exist in sec what it would call a second tier distribution network, which is your Stevens, your, your, your Squadron, Hobby Time. Hobby Town USA, Hobby Lobby, all of these places that distribute kits downstream, Walmart, things like that. Um, when you start looking at those second tier distributors, you start seeing what kits that they're out of, and then it becomes a situation of those kits only exist on frontline retail. Basically, they've been shipped out of, you know, Tower Hobbies, out of Stevens. And they only exist in whatever stock is still available on shelves places. And if you go to a Hobby Lobby, if you go anywhere, really, there there's a wide selection of Ravel kits. It's the, by no stretch of the, a means or imagination are they sold out of everything. There's a whole plethora of those, uh, like Ford Torinos, the the reissue of what a '75 or '76 or whatever they call that Torino uh, reissue of the Starsky and Hutch kit. There's a whole row of those things at my local Hobby Lobby. I did hear a story recently of somebody who tried to go into a Hobby Lobby in, I believe it was uh, Indiana, and literally buy every Ravel kit off the shelf and then tried to use the 40% off coupon like 25 times in a row, and they were having, of course, none of it. And it was apparently quite a comical situation uh, for the people who got to see that live. I'm just amused by the fact that, you know, anyone would really do that because, again... If you could go to a Hobby Lobby and buy 25, 30 Ravel kits, clearly there's no shortage of Ravel kits. One Hobby Lobby find that I did get here uh, last weekend when I when I did have that time to myself is is a re, the G Poncho Ice Patrol uh, reissue. This was the last one that was at my local Hobby Lobby, and uh, I was looking also for a, another kit, and I can't think of what it was. Also, the 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 reissue of the Oldsmobile Cutlass, the eighty five FX three uh, kit. That's also something you can't find because there was only a short run of those before the bankruptcy. Um, I got I can't think of what it is that I went there for, but I saw this instead and went, hey, you know what? Grab it. You know, 30 bucks is what Hobby Lobby has it priced at. With the coupon, it came out to like 19 bucks with tax, which is actually a little less than my local uh, hobby shop would sell it for. So Hobby Lobby continues, even though, oh my god, it's a $30 motor kit. Oh god, the price is so high. Uh, if you use the, you know, the 40% off coupon. We did a video on that probably a year and a half ago about the ridiculous complaining and people not realizing that 40% off of something is more when it costs more. Uh, this is still, like I said, under 20 bucks. Kit itself is, you know, is mediocre, let's face it. It's it's old. It's an old monogram kit. Um, nothing in here is chromed, so you have to chrome all the mirrors and the grills and the bumpers and everything. But, hey, that's what God made Molotov for, so, or the deity of your choice. God forbid I offend anybody. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I grabbed one of these just because one of those kits that I kind of sort of wanted and I couldn't find at my local hobby shop. He was out of them, so I found one. I grabbed it. Not because I'm, oh, my God, I'm so scared of it, but it was one of those weekends where it was like, hey, you know what? I'm going to spend a little cash, um, you know, celebrate my new uh, job and <laughs> get some more stuff I don't need. So, me, speaking of things I don't need, uh, went to the local hobby shop because I wanted to buy a whole bunch of primer, and I know he, he had a whole bunch of primer to sell, Tommy a primer. So, Fusca, you know, Cadillac, Eldorado. Lots of these laying around. There are, uh, This is the Fusca kit that, for some reason, is not hard to find. It may be because of the whole thing, and I obviously haven't opened this one to look, but the whole thing where these were coming with the windshield pillars flat to the body because of the way they package them, that might have started scaring people off. A lot of people don't like this card, and that's fine. I, it, the, the whining that they should have made a stock 47 or 48 Cadillac Eldorado. Hey, I would have bought one of those too, but let's be honest what was gonna what they were going to sell more of. Um, very interesting about the Danica Patrick car, by the way, is, as an aside to production numbers, the reason why the Danica Patrick kits got dumped at Ollie's out of the distributor system was the fact that Ravel made 10,531 of those. Not the normal 5,000 part run, but a 10,000 part double run. Because, you know, Danica Patrick's a really popular driver, especially with NASCAR builders. I, you know, 
uh, like I told my the little the local hobby shop guy when we we're talking about this, I know that like once you build a couple of NASCAR kits, at that point you're buying blanks, just like I do with GT3 cars, just like I do with Super GT cars. It doesn't matter to me what livery the car is in. I just need the wheels to be right for the for the next build and the body to be the one, which one I need to be and things like the the uh, 97 Toyota Supra kit, for example, the Castrol kit has one body kit and one set of wheels, and the Sard one has a slightly different body kit and a different set of wheels. Um, so, like, both these four Fusion kits are the same, this one and, uh, what was it, Kevin Harvick's car. So, like, if you all, if you don't care about Danica Patrick, the fact that they dumped them at all these for $9 a piece is fantastic, because you could literally go in there, buy several cases of them for, you know, $150, $200, and, uh, you know, be set for quite a while building four NASCAR kits. But I just, but as far as selling those in the retail market, it was the second version of a kit of what I would say is nominally a not a popular driver in you know something that already existed, and then you run to you run double run because hey, girl driver, those are gonna sell. <laughs> uh, whatever. So one last local pickup, and this is both of these. I picked both of these up at my local hobby shop. This was the last one my local hobby shop had of these. Uh, and I wanted to pick up both these Foos kits anyway, because they are new tool kits, and, uh, <coughs> you know, I guess I never got a chance to support Ravel's use of 3D scanning, because I didn't buy them until later. I mean, Ravel already made their money, because they sold them downstream anyway, but, uh, I, I may legitimately, this one may get a different color, but I c kinda like the overall, you know, Foosness of this. Um, I'm not a big, oh my god, I wish it was stock or, oh, it should do this or that thing. I kind of like the way this kit is, uh, or truck is, straight out of the box, although I'm not, like I said, not sure I'd paint it black, necessarily. Um, the Eldorado will be belt box stock in that blue color because I have the correct blue color. Uh, it's a Ferrari color, so I have that color. So that uh, covers that. All right, so first up, actually, before we get into the Hobby Link Japan stuff, is a, something I picked up out of Hobby Search, because uh, Hobby Link Japan was out of this, so we got another one of the Modeler's Resin Kits. This one for the 2000 and uh, Unfocusable. <laughs> I want it to be the same size as the screen. Come on. It should focus this way. Honestly. Why am I not... There it goes. The 2015 Toyota Prius Alpha premium touring selection. Uh, I, I could hear the collective eyeballs roll. Oh, yes, I heard them go. They sounded like an old Warner Brothers cartoon when they're playing slot machines with their eyes. It just came up all cuckoo-eyed. <laughs> Mainly because I've had this conversation with a friend of mine, and they were all like, oh my god, what the hell would you buy one of those things for? And I said, well, I already have a Fujimi Prius, so I might as well get a new one, right? I mean, a new one in the sense of a more up-to-date one, because the Fujimi Prius is like a 2008. Um, and he was like, do you really need another Prius? Well, no, I don't. didn't need the first one, but I have it, so I might as well have two. I mean, really, let's, let's be honest here. All right, so uh, contents here, bag of screws and a fucking pair of... Uh, Metal axles, uh, photo etch here. Let me make sure I'm on the right side. Yeah, okay. Is the window surrounds and uh, disc brakes, which are not particularly uh, manly in this car. Obviously, they're you know low rolling resistance, regenerative brake systems, so they're not vented or cross drilled or anything like that. Uh, you have all your windows uh, the way you normally would with the rear, rear window having the uh, defroster lines built into it. Um, it's just not going to focus. <laughs> it's just too much. There we go. Um, and then you really don't have an option here. Your back two, like the passenger windows, and then the rear uh, glass window, which sort of goes uh, above the brake lights and below the deck lid. There's like a glass pass through. Those are all permanently tinted. So your your uh, your people in your Prius are uh, all pimping out, I guess. And then there's a small sheet of decals, some toy metallic Toyota logos, which are decals as well. And then you have the Mylar uh, mirror faces. Uh, if you guys watched any of the, my videos about modelers resin, you know how these instructions work. Parts layout, a build, very basic, I should say, build sheet. I need to translate some Japanese here because it's, there's painting instructions, which are obviously in Japanese and I can't read them. <laughs> and then you have your color callouts for your decals and things like that. And here you see the, the glass pass through right here that goes in the back. One thing that isn't in this kit that, that shows here is this sort of 
real, real dark, real, real uh, dark tinted back glass. That's clear, but these side pieces, uh, as well as that that pass through, are dark tinted. So what do we have in here for uh, parts and whatnot? I can get this apart without dropping everything everywhere. Uh, one thing I've noticed about this kit, and we commented about it the last uh, couple of models that we looked at, that the tires in this kit, while probably pretty prototypically accurate for uh, what it is, are not black. Uh, a lot of the older, a lot of the other modelers kits, the re the wheels are uh, cast in a black resin because these are the same thing. They're hard, uh, rock hard uh, resin pieces. Um, but in other, like I said other modelers' kits, they are in fact cast in a uh, black resin. I'm trying to get this wheel out of here without breaking the back wheel back and popping it straight up out of the, out of the uh, thing. So you, you can see this has, you know, a typical uh, modelers' fit where you know it'll, it'll end up looking good once it's all all said and done. Don't drop the pieces. Too late, James. You dropped the piece. Fortunately, it didn't hit the floor. So that goes back in there. Uh, you know, typical uh, fare. For some reason, this getting this stuff out of this bin is being a little hard here. And you have a reasonable engraving on the side panels. Uh, you know, it's it's what you should, what we've come to expect. At least what I've come to expect. Uh, here's your your dashboard. Try not to cut the light out of it because that's going to not help focus it, but. And you get the general, general gist. Of course, it's right-hand drive because it's Japanese. Um, everything fits pretty good from the small amounts of test fits I've done. It is a pretty basic, <laughs> incredibly basic chassis, although the representation of the exhaust pipe is there, and then you get this little uh, extension here to make the actual, uh, you know, final piece of the exhaust. And, uh, you know, it's prototypically correct. It's not exciting, but it's prototypically correct. Uh, you, of course, build your interior up off, the, off this little chassis pan. Everything there uh, is pretty much self-explanatory uh, in terms of what goes where, because it's all all notched for your convenience. So, you know, you have a center console, and then the center console has a armrest. So, you know, probably line that up. Actually, no, I think that's the way it's supposed to line up. So then you end up with that, and then you get a couple of seats. If I can get them out. You know, a couple of couple of seats. These have a, a D shape or an inverted D shape, um, so they go on and, and fit. So you know, nothing's coming off when you shake it. And then the back seat, I believe, uh, actually ends up mold fitting into the car itself in the, in the sense of fitting into the actual body shell. So let me take these pieces apart, put them back so we don't lose them. We'll put the chassis pan back in here. We'll see if we can't get the back seat out. Maybe. Ah, no. My Prius. It had unattended acceleration. Nope, actually this goes on the floor too. I'm seeing now. So that will go like that. And actually becomes the uh, upper catch for the axle. body itself is uh, exactly what we come to expect in terms of the modelers. Um, very, very smooth casting. Uh, that one GTR that we got that other day is, seems to still be the one-off. This has all, you know, there's some uh, sort of dry marks where the resin was poured in terms of, of you know, it drying and there where the pore spouts were. But you're never going to see that because it'll be painted. But there's no pinholes in here. We don't have the whole situation uh, like we had in the GTR where stuff was cast, uh, sh almost short cast. Uh, the wheel wells have a little bit of a, a texture to them, which is kind of a nice touch. Uh, but overall, uh, this is a very good representation of what the current, or at least the former, I think the body style might have changed again here recently. Uh, but it, what, the f what the most recent, anyway, uh, Prius body looks like, I mean, it's a bigger car than it used to be, that's for sure. Um, and like I said, it's very smooth, no mold lines, no uh, pinholes, so very happy with the results on this purchase. Again, it'd be nice if the wheels were molded in black just from a lazy laziness standpoint. But, you know, all in all, you can't complain with this one. I realize that that's a kit that's not exactly going to tickle everybody's no-no spots, but uh, be that as it may, it was 
one that uh, you know is a you know just slots into that ever growing almost both the someday collection. Uh, so that dumps us over to Hobby Link Japan, where we got two kits and another modeler of resin. I know modeler of resin is the topic of du jour here. So first up is the brand new tool kit, the Calsonic uh, GTSR R31. Uh, the brand, like I said, brand new tool from Hasagawa. Um, this is, of course, a race spec version, so it has race spec parts. Uh, we covered this when we talk about it in the video itself, but the whole kit is molded in a nominally Calsonic-ish blue. One thing I noticed uh, uh, with them running these uh, off very, very quickly is the fact that the, the pull tab on the body is still cast into the middle of the uh, roof. Usually this will be would be trimmed off uh, on most production because, you know, if you send this out with this giant post in the middle of the windshield, usually people complain about that. I don't care because it's a very, very thin piece. It's just there legitimately seeking. So if the, the part won't, doesn't come off of the uh, the uh, ejectors, that you could pull it off the molded, molding side of the mold. So, again, it's not a big deal. But like I said, this was clearly not rushed, but clearly, you know, we just a step or two was taken out of... Uh, the production run to make sure that they got it out on time. But uh, you know, all your parts are here. Uh, I'm 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 saying that this whole thing is cast in Calsonic blue because much like uh, all the cars at this time, this is a unibody car, so the chassis should be the same color as the car. So that's why this is molded in blue. The street car that's going to be coming out in July, the chassis and things like that are molded in gray. So. Don't, don't fear, even, even though the body in that car is cast in a dark blue, the whole kit will not be cast in dark blue. Um, this just has some very, very, very nice detail all throughout. I don't know how well this, these glass pieces are going to show through the bag. Actually, going to show great of the engraving on the headlights and uh, whatnot. It's a one-piece glass system. This Hasegawa for you, I guess. Um, these are the, the decals for the kit. Uh, they are cartograph. Um, I'm, I'm guessing cartograph must be may be able to do like a better job on like whites than maybe the place in Japan where they normally get their decals printed from, because uh, they are definitely you could tell the difference between these decals uh, or the decals that are in some of the 318i's over uh, their. I don't know, they're not home brew because I don't think they print their own decals, but you can tell the difference between the Japanese versions of their decals and not. Here are the window masks for the entire kit. Uh, there's, it's hard to tell because they're, they are pre-cut, but showing you like the divider lines, they're not going to show up real well, but it's like, here's the front window, side windows, back windows, rear windows, and then on the sides here, you have these half horseshoes, and what these half horseshoes are, are for applying them to the rims of these BBS wheels so that you could paint the rim gold and leave the actual rim, or paint the hub, well, it's color, the, the mesh part gold and leave the rim chrome because they are stainless, polished stainless steel or polished aluminum wheels. Uh, so that's a very interesting uh, use of a mask. I've never seen that done before, but it certainly is. A nice feature, you know, back in here are your uh, are your BBS wheels. They're cast completely and totally in chrome. So, uh, this is it here, backwards. Way I want to yep, I guess not. You know what, I'm just going to put the glass on top. That way it's not underneath anything. And that, I believe, is actually the way that this kit came. I've been, I've dug through this kit a couple of times, just sort of looking at it. Uh, I'm waiting on some other pieces for it before I start it. Uh, the other kit that came from Hobby Link Japan, a very, very short shipment from Hobby Link Japan this this month because there wasn't a whole lot of kits that I wanted, uh, is this, which is the reissue of the Object T Trompeo BP uh, Zippo Civic. So this is the Ferio Civic. Um, this has a different set of wheels in it than the other two Civics that have been reissued before. This kit is molded in yellow, uh, at least the body is. The rest of the kit molded in a gray, as you can see. And uh, the decals in here end up doing everything else for you. So all the BP green and everything like that is all molded, are all colored in BP green already. So all you need to do is apply the decals. Like I said, these are not cartograph decals, and they just don't have quite... Like, I've, ne I've never had a problem using Hasegawa's decals, 
So I don't want to not be all like, oh my god, how's it got decals? You don't want to use that. It's not that. It's just that looking at the decals and even just sort of the sheen that the sheet has, uh, it's just not quite cartograph. But uh, they're certainly serviceable. Don't be all like, oh god, uh, not that. I did notice that on this one, uh, the, this Civic has the same pull tab still located in the middle of the windshield. So apparently the, uh, the factory was running overtime <laughs> just trying to get things out the door. Uh, but otherwise, this is the same Ferio kit that uh, the last three have been. Uh, I purchased what two of them already, so I'm not going to go through boring you with a th with you know highlights of the third one. Like I said, the only thing different about us is the wheels and the livery, and that brings us to the modelers kit from uh, Hobby Link Japan. So this is going to be the 2015 Honda Civic Type R, or the not going to focus, type R. There we go. Um, so this is the newest uh, modeler's resin kit out there. This is, uh, most recent, most up-to-date, I guess I should say. There is, was, is or was a uh, 2017 Nismo GTR that was coming out, or was coming out still says that it's coming out, but it's been a little while since it was supposed to be out. Um, a little bit of damp to this. I'm not exactly sure why. Huh. It doesn't smell like cat pee. That's my primary concern. <laughs> I know. Everybody went, oh, God! But, yeah. I'm not exactly sure why this is... Why the bottom of this box is wet. It must have been wet from the... Uh, from the box... From the post office, and I just didn't realize the box was damp. But at any rate, same the deal here. Your, your parts layout, uh, some assembly instructions. This uh, giving you uh, the details of how to paint the interior with the decals to make all of the the red parts on the seat. And then uh, this is mostly decal layout. There's not a whole heck of a lot to this kit in terms of that. And then you have your uh, paint. And of course, as usual, all the colors on top here. I know you can't see them, but all the colors that the uh, kit normally comes or the car normally comes in one one land uh, are shown there. So here you have your uh, photo etch tree. You have your window surrounds, your brakes, uh, grill some grill pieces. And what I love about these modelers kits, uh, a lot of these lights are you know like coated in. I don't know if this is epoxy or what the photo etch itself is coated in, and then colored. So like the third brake lights and things like that are already pre-colored. Even the headlights are, have a, like a, a clear over a silver type of deal. So that's very, very cool. Um, a little sloppy in the application, frankly, but <laughs> it's all there. And it'll, it'll you know, when it's trimmed out it'll uh, of that thing, it's uh, going to show up the right way. Screws and axles. Decals, fortunately, sealed in a plastic bag, so they should still be okay. I hope <laughs> they don't. They don't look like they've been subjected to any moisture. <laughs> that the box, uh, God, it's just weird. Nothing else around here is wet. I don't know why that is. Let's check the sheet real quick since I have it here. And yeah, that's still good. Nothing. No damage. Why well, you should keep your decals and it's in a dry place in a sealed plastic bag a lot of people will tell you put it in like archivist paper too that'll work but uh as well but still plastic bag will work so you have your uh metalized like honda metalized honda logos uh some you know crappy mylar cutouts for the mirror faces and then your actual uh decal sheet itself for the interior pieces and it's not going to show now because I took it out of the bag and now the bag is not you know all sucked down real tight to the decal sheet anymore there you go hey you get the gist so there's that and then you have your windows uh, in here which um, do appear to once again have you make the back uh, glass be tinted uh, I will say that at least these are not like Tar, they are a brownish uh, tint to them, so they're still see-through. The Prius ones that I showed you are like a window, or like uh, road tar, and they're black, as black could be. 
So let's go into the actual uh, kit itself now, maybe. <laughs> Very, very well organized. Kind of a pain in the tokus to get apart, though. So. Without getting, uh, without spraying uh, parts, little teeny tiny resin parts, all over your house. Just need to get it off the body end. Come on. Come on, little girl. There you go. Oh, I love the smell of modeler resin. It's a combination of like paint and glue and resin, obviously. Now we see with this one, we've returned to uh, black resin tires. I guess it would help if I put them on camera. I was holding them way down low, like I had the camera pointed at the desk, like desk desk. And so uh, we have our wheels here, which have been clumsily cut out of the poor blocks, but you will never see that part because that's going to be. Uh, the back side of the wheel. Let me make sure I'm on the right side of this wheel. Eh, maybe not. Does it go this way? No, nope, can't go that way. Eh, give me a different wheel. Because this will. Ah, there we go. There we go. And so here's your. What your wheel fit looks like. Pretty nice. I like these wheels in general, as far as the shape and and uh, like design. I guess would be the word I'm clumsily tripping over. Um, so, as usual, there's a little bit of a, you know, not variable, but a little bit of a, of, of a thing there with the wheels not quite being, you know, the same dimension all the way. Or it might be the tires are slightly smaller. So, uh, you have your chassis plate, which I think is a pretty good representation of uh, the Honda uh, chassis in this case. Uh, you get a little uh, piece here for the back half of the exhaust, if I can get it all to fit at the same time, because it's got to go... Not only into one slot, but three at the same time. There we go. So, uh, obviously a little cleaner fit up here, uh, you know, to get that down with down with the uh, rear axle. But uh, that gives you the idea of what your exhaust is going to look like. And then your uh, exhaust tips, typical modeler, you know, hollow on the outside, or the inside, I guess I should say, hollow on the outside, huh. It would effectively have no bevel to them at that point, but uh, same deal as always. You're building the seats off the floor. We can get a seat out. Maybe. Maybe possibly. I try to tip them up that way. There we go. And so, uh, good detail on the back of the seats, I think. Oops. The sport seats that the Type R come with, so that's, uh, that's nice. Your back seat here will fit into the typical back seat wedge and uh, you know that's pretty much your interior because of course with uh, modelers resin pieces the dashboard goes up into the body and so do the door panels so the door panel let's pull one up of those uh, pretty nice uh, graving detail there I think everything looks pretty nice and crisp and then that goes up into this this block slot up here in the uh, body, and you end up with that look right there for your door panels. Pull that back off. Got your dash here. Dash here. Got your dash here. Um, try to see what. Try to see what is fo in focus on the camera, and then block that so it'll go into focus on this instead. This over here is what's in focus, but. Uh, at any rate, that ends up going into that slot there. Like that. And then you have your dashboard installed in the body. So, that is what all that's going to look like. Here's your body itself. No, uh, neglect that. This again, uh, a nice, good casting here. No, no uh, weak spots, no... Uh, no holes, no pinholes, very smooth casting. Uh, this is going to take paint real nice without it being an issue. Um, and uh, I just, I like the Civic Type R body. I just think it's a it's a nice, aggressive hot hatch. I'm going to sort of bring it back, bringing it back, the hot hatch uh, look here. Let me see if I can find a, a uh, headlight bezel for you so that will slot into 
this. I should. There we go. So that slots in there like that. And then your window glass or, or headlight glass, as it were. Let's see which way does this go? I need the other one. And you have your window. Whoops. No, don't fall. Please, <laughs> please, please, gentle piece of resin, clear resin that I will break and never find again. And then goes your uh, glass fit. So again, the glass on these kits, the, all of this stuff in these kits is just so really seriously well done. Um, it's very, very hard to find things to, to grumble and complain about. I mean, I'm sure you could if you have tried, but uh, the fit of even, like I said, the clear glass, the clear resin pieces... Uh, let me see which rear one, rear piece did I grab? This one, I think. So there's the, the fit of the back. I'm I'm spending a little more time with this than I normally would because I know there will be a lot of you guys that are into Hondas and they'll be very very interested in this piece because it is kind of a pricey thing. It's a model of resin, so it's going to be you know your eighty ninety dollar resin kit, but as usual, I, I think it's worth it if you want this uh, kit bad enough. And we'll throw the big old uh, tail, whale tail on the back here to give you a, a look of how that uh, ends up looking. If I can get it in both sides at one time. So there's your rear spoiler. Kind of ridiculous <laughs> in terms of me. And say there we go. Now it's flat deck with the wing itself. So a little, a little bit extra. All right, a little bit, you know, nothing, nothing hurt anything, right? Give you a spoil. Yo, dog, we heard you like spoilers. So give you a spoiler on your spoiler. So old reference to uh, Pip My Ride to anybody who's old enough to remember that. Uh, let's take a quick look at how the mirrors fit while we're here. Let's see, this is the driver's side. And so, yeah, that just slots right in there. So this should be a very enjoyable uh, build, I think. Uh, there's nothing about this kit that I see that doesn't fit on uh, first insertion, as it were. And throw the little center console. Nope, that fits. Um, got the, the uh, gas brake and clutch pedals. Nope, that fits. Everything everything fits. So nothing to, uh, nothing to be upset about here. Let um, me get the center so the body will drop on. Shut Sam. And uh, yeah, guys, like I said, I, 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 I really, if the subject matter gets you, if, if this is something that turns your crank, uh, and I know for the Honda guys it will because it's a modern Civic and there are none of those, or at least none of the modern, modern Civics because uh, Fuel Me and, of course, Hobby Design, or not Hobby Design, but uh, Oh, what am I trying to think of? Uh, <laughs> it'll come to me in a second. But uh, you know, there's a couple of people that have done the generation prior to this, like the 2012, 2013 Civic, but nobody has done the most recent Civic uh, until now. So, and this is an officially licensed Honda product. For anybody who's concerned about modelers, you know, not being legit, that's why these kits end up costing so much. They are licensed, officially licensed product by the manufacturers. So. There is that. Now we have a couple of decals and one photo etch piece to talk about real quick, and then we'll go to the buy e box because that'll just be a plow, that'll just be a plow through. Uh, these are the this is the photo etch for the Ferrari F430 Challenge uh, kits that Fujimi made. Uh, they reissued this photo etch last month. Uh, came with this stuff from Hobby Link Japan, obviously. Um, I bought four of these because I have as many 430 kits I have planned uh, in my Super GT collection. And, uh, you know, for being nine bucks a piece, it was too good a deal to pass up to just get all of them at once and just be done with it. Uh, you can see here, it's just a whole, tells you on the back here, basically what everything is as far as what the, what the numbers are. There aren't really instructions to this. Uh, there are some, but not, they're not complete and total the way you would like them to be, I think, you know, <laughs> uh, some of the stuff just won't be called out at all. Uh, this was, uh, May's livery for the GT3 kits. This is the number 30 uh, AMG GT3 that ran 24 hours of Nürburgring. This was a sister car to the uh, what second place finisher and this car did not finish. It had a, a collision. Uh, it is 
what is known as the red stripe car, because as you can see, of course, see there, and on the front, those are red AMG stripes, and it's the only one, only car that had those uh, for the season was this one HTP Motorsports car. Uh, so a lot of people were really kind of looking forward to this livery just because it was different. Uh, a lot of cars had white stripes, a lot of cars had blue stripes, yellow stripes, but that was the only one with the red stripes. And then the uh, carbon fiber for May was the Porsche 911 GT1. This, of course, is the uh, GT, the FIA GT1 car uh, that uh, Porsche ran in the Le Mans and ran it in FIA GT1, uh, or what was it called? FIA GT World Challenge, I think is what that series was called. It changed names a couple of times during the GT1's uh, reign uh, as the top-tier FIA racing uh, division. But this is a two-sheeter. Basically, this is obviously your... Uh, under tray, and then all the rest of this is mostly interior pieces. Uh, it's only a one-sided instruction sheet, so what you see here is what you're going to have to build. Obviously, like I said, most of those big parts are for the under tray here for underneath the engine, and then you have, uh, you know, each door panel gets, uh, <laughs> maybe, if we can get the focus, yes. It's too much to ask. Unfortunately, this header got full, but now it just doesn't want to cooperate, so let's see if we can get this straight with the camera first. Yes. Yes, maybe, no. It's the shininess, and I don't want to take the instructions out because I'll never get them back in with these resealable plastic bags that they use. But uh, just pretend you can see this clearly. You have door panels. This is whole intake uh, for the engine. These are the wing bus uh, struts. Some more for the actual uh, dashboard. It's telling you basically with all this blah, blah, blah here to either use the kit decal or their decal. You get the seat wrap, uh, and then you have the like I said, the wrap for the front uh, splitter area and the wrap for the basically the back where the engine goes. So a uh, pretty good uh, carbon fiber set without being completely totally crazy. And for some reason, this part will focus, or at least it did a second ago. Uh, there's <coughs> excuse me, some nice, really nice patterns to this that you can even see through there, through the uh, shininess. So very, very cool stuff. Uh, just had a, a little row online last month about uh, the carbon fiber that uh, Studio 27 puts out in terms of whether or not it's any good. I am of the belief that it's fantastic and excellent. It just requires quite a bit of patience. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. You either like it or you don't, and if you don't, I can't change your mind. So buy E-Box real quick. Another Castrol Primera JTCC car. I really, 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 really want to build the JTCC season car. Um, I already have one of these. You guys know that I want to, that I'm going to do as the uh, the uh, Gear Race Bacal car. And these decals are not fantastic, but they're I think they're better than the other set. I'm hoping that with like two of these, I can salvage a livery because nobody reprinted these uh, Primera decals, and I really don't want to pay to have somebody you know redraw them. Um, I, I sort of like was going to go ahead and, and ignore the JTCC factor on this when I bought this originally. I know this was something that would never happen now, but when I bought it originally, uh, mainly because, you know, I was just looking for the easiest way to go about sort of replicating the design, but not necessarily the car. And there's the Gear Race of Macau version that is uh, the same race team and same driver, but it's not the same sponsorship exactly. Uh, and then, of course, we had, like, the Corona and a bunch of these Ferio Civics and things get reissued. This is a 1994 season JTCC car. This is a 1994 JTCC season car. The Corona. <laughs> I know. It's just a chassis, not the box. This is a 1994 JTCC season car. Technically not being built as a JTCC car, but still... Uh, and all of the, the three 18 eyes that Hasegawa reissued, they're all 1994 uh, as well. So uh, I, I really want to build the JTCC version now. Uh, I picked up another one of these. This is, of course, the Ford. Uh, uh, this is the Object T Trampio Ford uh, that ran 1988, several years before they had to go to driving a little piddly Civic. Uh, the decals in here, eh, not that bad. And that was, again, not as bad as the last one I bought. Uh, this will end up being uh, the base for the other, for one of the two uh, Gear Race of Macau uh, Trompio Sierras, which are Trompio Ford Sierras. Uh, we showed you those decals a few months ago. And then we have, mainly because I couldn't find one uh, in terms of uh, 
popular in Japan. They're out of stock, and I think the kit's still in production, but it was... How long is the wait going to be? Well, we really don't know. So I went ahead and I picked one of these up. It's a giant box that won't fit on the screen here. So we'll go this way with it. It's the Porsche 911 GT1 uh, kit. Uh, I think if this is the one I remember, I bought this. It, and it has another set of decals in here. Let me look. But it is, uh, you know, completely factory sealed as I crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. So not started or anything else like that. But there are two of them I was looking at. One of them has a spare set of decals. Ah, it is this one. So it has the regular decals, which these are excellent quality or uh, excellent shape. Um, I think this is a newer than, I, I mean, the kit was made in 1997, but I think this is a newer uh, kit than that as far as the issue date, because these aren't yellowed at all. Uh, and they have the piece of paper stapled to them, and that was not something they did originally. But this also has a set of Renaissance decals in it to, uh, which, yeah, they might be okay, they might not be. Uh, they just aren't quite what I was looking for quality-wise, just pulling them out of the box. But these make the GT1 uh, JB Racing Sebring uh, GT, FIA GT uh, 1997 Marlboro-sponsored car. Uh, so I may, uh, now that I've seen these decals for the actual factory car, for the Le Mans car, are good. Uh, I may try to find another GT1 kit uh, and another carbon fiber set and build this one too because these decals are are in good shape there's nothing wrong with them they're just you know you sort of like take a look at them and they're they are they are you know done commercially they're they're not one whole decal sheet but they're not real particularly like super 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 sharp which is something i heard about renaissance decals the old stuff from the 90s but be that as it may it's still there it's still on one piece uh i'm satisfied with them i mean it the, the cost of the decals was basically not an issue. Like they, they were free, effectively. I mean, they weren't, but like the, what they end up costing, you have your, your sheet here telling you how to do your decals. You do this stuff up here first, and then you apply all the rest of it. That way you don't end up uh, get, screwing yourself over on decals. This car, of course, uh, won, finished second and third in the 1996 Le Mans race. Uh, 1997 also ran pretty much the same car and then became the 911 Evo, which of course is the kit that UT models as well as Ravel uh, did, which was kind of an odd thing, but then Ravel was also doing the Corvettes at the same time that were full detail. So uh, I've actually never seen the inside of one of those Ravel GT1 Evos. I don't know how good, good or bad those kits are, but uh, again, cool. Very glad to have that. And if anybody who follows the stash report knows that this month's, the June carbon fiber, is for the Mercedes CLK GTR, the F1 uh, car that uh, Mercedes put together for 1997. Now, there are two kits of this, well, three of them, actually, four if you count the prepainted one, but there are three kits of this. This one, which is just the basic FIA GT kit, uh, the DT with the Warsteiner and DT, D, ugh, same DT, D2. Uh, livery, and that's what this one is. Uh, these decals, I mean, they look good here, but if I zoom them in, they're, they're just a little skosh yellow, but that's okay because these are uh, easily replaceable. They're, Shunko has a whole replacement set for these. Uh, maybe a little kind of scuffed up. Actually, it looks like something got an adhesive right there, so got to order a replacement set, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to be building this as the number 11 car, I believe, is the right one. Uh, they ran when the car ran at uh, the 500 kilometers of Fuji race, I believe, or maybe been what? I'm not exactly sure what the specification was as far as the race is without looking it up. But they ran uh, either Fuji or Suzuka as part of the Fiat GT1 uh, series, and uh, <laughs> it's just not going to focus any other way. And they still may not focus this way. Uh, Agori Suzuka ran this car. There he is. Uh, it was just an add-on driver with Bern Schneider and uh, Alexander Warg uh, for that one race. And so that's how I'm going to build that because I kind of have this thing about Agori Suzuka at this point. It's, you know, very talented driver owner. Uh, oddly enough, the silver decals are spot on perfect, but the regular ones are not. So, eh, who knows? That's what happens when you buy used kits. Um... But this car specifically, like I said, can replicate any of the FIA uh, GT 1997 races. 
Um, and the Fiat GT races for 1997, they won six of the 11 races. So, um, very, very dominant car. You could build this either the number 10 car or the number 11 car, and there was also subsequently a number 12 car that also ran, and that is the Team CLK Sportswear uh, car. It has all of these scandalously clad uh, men and women all over it. I picked up the newest re reissue of that kit. Uh, when did this come out? In 19... The original kit came out in 1997. This one came out in 2006. So they've reissued this specific kit. The other one has not been. It's. I think it's one of those things pretty much been in current production, although it's currently not in production. I know. That doesn't make any sense, but um, that base CLK GTR kit was in production for a really long time, basically. It's not hard to find at all. This one, finding it with this box, is a little more difficult because the original kit was actually this one with the CLK Sportswear. So you can find the CLK Sportswear kit like nobody's business, but finding a, a newer one that has new decals in it are not so not so easy. So uh, you can see here, you've got some, some young ladies in there. This, is, of course, is where the headlights go on the, <laughs> the hood, so don't think any untoward thoughts. Otherwise, the kit itself is identical to the other one. It literally is just a livery change. And I wanted, since I was going to build the number 11 car, I wanted to build something else, and I didn't want to build the 10 car because it was not as successful. Um, this one won uh, the first place uh, in the sixth race of the season and second place at Suzuka. So Suzuka is where... They ran with Agori Suzuki as the other co-driver. And uh, we may just do both of these as Suzuka uh, cars. I'm not sure if there's any specification that changes, uh, you know, the, the thing. But here's your... I was just looking to see if there's anything on there. It was like Suzuka specifically. More than likely, these are the decals for Suzuka specifically because, you know, Japan uh, manufacturer. But that's what the uh, livery looks like. You get the general gist, even though it doesn't want to focus. So. Anyway, guys, that wraps up the purchases. This is probably like a month's worth of stuff, because remember, the Hobby Link Japan stuff is a month behind, and then uh, this other stuff is pretty much a month behind, too. It just all showed up at all. <laughs> shipped it here recently. So, Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a really, really long one, uh, but, you know, we're catching up. <laughs> stuff that would have been uh, a couple different videos ended up being one there. So, Anyway, guys, uh, we'll... Catch up with you later, and we'll see you guys on the other side.